Admiral, I want to continue along the line of questioning about Taiwan's capabilities. Uh, I know that there's a backlog of weapons transfers to Taiwan that has to be addressed, um, but not every kind of weapon in the world is backlogged. Um, so while we work on that backlog, I want your professional assessment on whether an appropriation of FMF funds to provide Taiwan with weapons that are not backlog, weapons such as mines, might be helpful for them and also helpful to increase deterrence in the Western Pacific? Uh, yes, Senator. So the delivery capability uh, to enable our responsibilities under the Taiwan Relations Act is important, and to get it uh, to the people on Taiwan is critical. And the capabilities we've laid out uh, have, uh, that we've coordinated and identified inside the department, uh, there are many that could be done very quickly. And could you could you just give us kind of uh, a handful of the top priorities of what additional FMF funds could get to Taiwan of weapons that are not backlogged? Uh, I think what I give you is the capability set. I can't tell you which specific okay. ones are backlogged. But if you think about anti-aircraft capability, if you think about anti-ship capability in a variety of forms, whether they be missiles, uh, mines, uh, but th those capabilities would be critical. Um, there's also the possibility of a, a Taiwan-focused presidential drawdown. Would your answer be the same for that, that, that also could help surge some of the capabilities to Taiwan that they need to improve deterrence in the Western Pacific, just like FMF funds would? Uh, yes, sir, absolutely, and I thank Congress for uh, taking a look at that, and ultimately uh, for the Presidential Drawdown Authority, not only for the authority to do it, but ultimately to backfill it if, if, uh, if possible is critical. Okay. Uh, you've also expressed concern about the loss of any combat power in the theater. As uh, the ranking member on the Airland Power Subcommittee, I've been particularly concerned about the fact that our Air Force is characterized by shrinking inventories in an aging fleet going back 30 years now. Um, I, I want to be clear, I'm not talking about changing our global force posture. I know there's been um, a lot of angst, if you will, about moving aircraft around from the Western Pacific and from Germany and Alaska. So I'm not talking about that. I, I'm talking about adding more capability to the Air Force as a whole. Um, given the importance of air power in any kind of conflict scenario in the Western Pacific, would additional F-15 EXs and F-35s in the Air Force inventory enhance your efforts to deter conflict? That certainly would, Senator, especially when you talk about the increased capability and capacity that might come with that fifth generation advanced uh, and uh, the fourth generation capability uh, that exists in the EX. Uh, those capabilities would absolutely help deliver deterrent effects. Thank you. General North Korea uh, continues to develop new capabilities and make new threats uh, to the Republic of Korea and to the United States and other friends. Um, they recently tested a solid-fueled intercontinental ballistic missile. How does that change your assessment of their capability, and why would that be an important advance for North Korea over their traditional liquid-fueled missiles? No, thanks, Senator. It poses some challenges on the indications and warnings. Um, it, again, moving... He, he laid out his plan. He's moving towards it. It's continuing to demonstrate a couple of things. One, um, he meant what he said, and, and two, um, he's continuing to um, work, you know, be able to develop this capability, even with sanctions and even with COVID and lockdowns and things like that. Uh, he's been able to continue this, uh, this development. And, and why exactly does the introduction of a solid fuel missile uh, reduce your indications and warnings? I'd rather move that to a classified setting. So. Okay. I, just, I think sometimes uh, we get kind of um, accustomed to these provocations from North Korea and we overlook the fact that they are in fact improving their nuclear forces capability and it's not just the same old, same old. Uh, I can assure you I'm not distracted. No, I know you're not, but I think some people here and, and when they see the news in the United States are, and I think it's important that we be mindful that they are making technological progress that is alarming in both uh, the nature of their nuclear forces and also the ranges of their missiles. Thank you both, gentlemen.